In this video, we're going to learn about integers. Um, to do that, we're going to define both integers and opposites. We're going to locate integers and opposites on the number line. And then we're going to talk about how we can compare integers. Um, our learning experience, we're going to look at two definitions and some examples. We're going to look at how do you actually compare them. And then there will be some you do problems and some suggested practice problems. So let's talk about integers to begin with. So an integer is any whole number. Doesn't matter what it is, it could be any whole number. That means it could be positive, it could be negative, it could even be zero. And yes, that's a separate thing than positive and negative, but that's a whole other discussion for some other time. Um, and integers always have opposites. Now, what is an opposite? Let's talk about that next. So an opposite, or opposites rather, are two numbers that are the same distance from zero. The only number, the only integer that's not going to have an opposite is zero because it's at zero already. It can't be the same distance from itself. So if we look at an example, let's say that we have value of six. If we find where six would be on a number line, we can put a dot there. And if we look at the distance from zero to six, we see that it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So the distance from zero to six is six. Wow. That means to find its opposite, we need to start at zero and also go a distance of six, but in the other direction. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And where does that leave us? At negative six. So we know that the opposite of six is going to be negative six. Now you might see that and think, huh, does that just mean that any opposite is going to be either negative or positive, depending on which one your original number was? Yeah, that's exactly what it means. So nothing too bad. Just make sure that they're the same distance from zero. So now let's look at an example. Let's say we have a bird and a fish in the sea. We know that the bird flies at an altitude of 5 meters, while the fish swims at a depth of 3 meters. First thing that we're going to do is plot both of their positions on a number line. You'll see here we have a vertical number line. That's okay. Uh, number lines can be any direction you want. Uh, the horizontal or vertical are probably going to be the most useful. So first of all, let's put our bird on the number line. We're going to make it blue. Um, and we see that it is at an altitude of 5 meters. If we think about zero being like sea level, that means the bird is going to be up here, up at five. The fish, on the other hand, is down at a depth of three meters. Now, you might be tempted to put it here at three, but since it's at a depth, that means it's under the water, right? So that means our fish is actually going to be right here. So that's all you need to do for plotting things on a number line. As for finding the opposites, if we think about the opposite of the fish's position, we know that it is a distance of one, two, three from zero. So to find its opposite, we're going to continue going the other direction. And would you look at that? It's right where three would be on our number line, so the opposite of the fish's position would be three meters. So now it's time for a you do. What you're going to do is you're going to draw a number line. Try to keep your spacing between your uh, numbers even. That way it looks a little bit nicer. Um, and you're going to plot two different things. You're going to plot four on your number line. You're going to find its opposite. And then you're going to plot negative two on your number line as well and to find its opposite. Ready, go. So, a few things to remember. An integer is any whole number. It could be positive or negative, uh, as well as zero. An integer and its opposite are always the same distance from zero. That means that zero, again, does not have an opposite. And this is just a general good thing to remember. When you're making a number line, do your best to keep the spacing even. It doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, but it shouldn't be just a bunch of random 
uh, distances from each other. That's going to get you really confused when you're trying to look at your number line to make any sense of it. So we're going to leave you with some suggested practice problems. Really, it's just one problem, but you're going to do a few things with it. Uh, you're going to draw a completely new number line. Watch its spacing. Um, and then you have four integers to plot. You're going to plot them and then find the opposite of each of those values as well and then plot those as well. Um, and that's it. Good luck.